So in this video, we'll be looking at how to work out percentages and percentage increase decrease without the use of a calculator. Now there are some practice quick worksheets and an Excel worksheet for you to have a go at with links in the description. Now once you've mastered multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting in maths, the next logical step for you to move on in your quest to master maths is to look at fractions, decimals and percentages. And what we're going to look at first is we're going to look at percentages without using a calculator. Now the good thing about being able to do this without use, finding percentages without using a calculator is if you have got a calculator you can always use this as a backup method. However there are very simple features you can do and methods you can use when working out percentages on a calculator and there's even functions that are pre-programmed on your calculator which you can use to help you do the answer to this. But Working percentage of amount is a really, really important skill that you will use outside of a classroom and it's really good if you can men master mentally. So just by looking at a question, within a couple of seconds, you should be able to tell me the answer. Now in terms of common percentages that you'll be asked to work out, particularly without using a calculator, are the five on the screen. Now what I'm going to do is just make a highlight of these and this is definitely something that I would add to your revision notes in your exercise book or on a revision poster because it is something that you really really do need to be able to memorize. Now if you can master these five percentages then under a certain amount of time you can work out any percentage of a given amount. Now I'm not going to focus on decimal amounts just yet, uh, but it's important that you master these five first. So to work out 50%, what you need to do there is divide by two. Now 25% you can do two options, and there's always going to be, for certain percentages, there is going to be more than one method you can use, and you just need to find a method that works for you. It might be question specific, but it might be something that you prefer to do rather than others. So to find 25%, you can either divide by two twice or divide by four to work and you should still get the same answer so it doesn't really matter which method you use. For 10% you need to divide by 10 or what you can do is move the decimal point one place to the left making the number smaller. Now from that what you then need to be able to do is if you do if you have a number that doesn't have a decimal point so for example like 24 then imagine the foot the decimal point is like a full stop so it's just at the end so if there is no decimal point in your number just pop it at the end and you can then go on and do whatever you need to so for five percent you then just need to find ten percent and then divide by two and then to find one percent you've got a couple of options you can either divide by ten twice or you can divide by a hundred or you can move the decimal point twice to the left making the number smaller now there are also some other commonly asked percentages that you might get asked uh, and these are all variations using the five sort of percentages that we've used above. Now to work out 75% then what you need to do there is you need to work out 50% and work out 25% and add them together. Now usually if you end up with a percentage you just got to use those five numbers to either add or subtract to get to the percentage that you actually want and obviously then work it out separately. Now to work out 33 and 0.3 recurring percent or 33 and a third percent what you need to do there is divide the number by three. To work out 20 percent you find 10 percent and multiply it by two. To work out 30 percent you find 10 percent multiplied by three and I'm sure you can see what the sort of pattern is there. To work out 200 percent what you need to do is double the original amount. To work out 150 percent you need to find 50 percent and then more importantly you need to add to the original amount. And then to work out 6%, you can either work out 1% and multiply by 6, or you can find 5% and 1% add them together. So if you do get quite a tricky percentage, so for example, let's say we were asked to work out 45%, then what you need to do is you need to try and use the numbers of 50, 25, 10, 5, and 1 to try and get that number of 45. Now there's several ways in which I could do this. I could either see 45% as um, 10%, so let's get rid of that. So I could see it as 10% plus 10% plus 10% plus 10% plus 5%, and work those amounts out, work out those amounts separately, and then add them together. Or what I could do is I could work out what 50% is and subtract 5% from that, and I'll get the same. Or you could do variation the same, I could end up doing 25%, so let's get a different colour. So, or I could do 25% plus 10% plus 10%. 
So there are so many different ways you can work out the answers to these percentage questions using these five percentages and you just need to decide which one first comes into your head and which one you find easier. So from that let's have a look at some example questions. Now this worksheet is attached on to in the description so feel free. Now I'm not going to do all um, how many questions are there? 30 questions because you'll be sitting here and you'll probably fall asleep. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out some key questions and I'm just going to do how we work it out on the side. So regards to question one, uh, what we need to do is 50%. So to work out question one, all I need to do is do 16 divided by 2, which gives me the answer of 8. And if I pick another question, let's go for number two. So 25% of 28. So if you think back to your method, 25%, work out 50%. So 50% is going to be half of 28, which is 14. And half of 14 is going to be 7. So 25% equals 7. And let's go for another one. Let's go for 75% of 16. Well, to work out 75%, that's 50% plus 25%. Now 50% of 16 is 8. 25%, well if 50% is 8 then 25% is going to be 4 and if I add those two numbers together I get 16. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that one because it looked like a pound sign there and 16 is my final answer. So let's have a look at another question. Let's go for uh, question 6. So 10% of 30 so to work out 10%, all I need to do is divide 30 by 10, in which I get the answer of 3. If I then work out, uh, let's do question 8, 70%. Well, to work out 70%, I've got a few ways I can do this. I could either work out what 50% is, plus 10%, plus 10%. Or what I could do is do 10% times 7 so it doesn't really matter which one you go for so let's go for so 50% of 50 is going to be 25 10% of 50 is going to be 5 so it's just 25 plus 5 plus 5 which is 35 and there is a the final answer and likewise if I wanted to work out 70% uh, so this here we've got 10% would be 5 times 7 gives me 35. So you can see how it gives me the exact same answer regardless of which method I choose. So let's just do, let's just get rid of this and then let's do a few more. And let's have a go at, so let's just change the uh, highlighter. Okay, let's get a pink. Right, so let's go for 95% of 300. So for question 20, and uh, just make sure the pen's tricky. So for question 20, again 95%, what to do this, what I could do is do 100% minus 5%. Now 100% of the number is going to be exactly the same, so that's going to be 300. Now to work out 5%, well 10%, again, if I move the decimal point one place to the left, makes it 30. So half of 30 is going to be 15. And if I do 300 take away 15, it gives me 285. And if I then move on to question 21, uh, so let's just highlight that. So again, 60%, so the method I'm going to use for question 21, so 60% is equal to 50% plus 10%. So 50% of 50 is 25. And 10%, and again, I'm going to move the decimal point one place, makes it 5. So here the answer then is 30 and if I pick another one let's go for 15% again a very another common one that I should have highlighted in there so 15% so question 25 well 10% of 60 again we move the decimal point one place makes it 6 so therefore 5% of 60 is going to be 3 
So therefore, 15%, all I need to do is add those numbers up, equals 9. And there is the final answer. So with the rest of them, you are going to get sort of a combination of those five numbers. But it's just a case of taking your time and a bit of practice. And like I said, the key thing is remembering those five steps. So remember those and always make a note and while you're practicing just have that in front of you um, so you can see exactly what you need to do and like I said there are some quite commonly asked percentages 15% is obviously worth adding on there and that's you do that by working out 10% working out 5% and then adding the two numbers together now once you've mastered that the next thing you then move on to is increase decrease questions so let's just have a look at those so for increased questions the first thing you need to do is find the percentage amount and then you either need to add if you're increasing or subtract if you're decreasing. So let's have a go at two examples. So for the first one, we're going to increase by 200 by 10 percent. So increase 240 by 10 percent. So first thing we need to establish that we are increasing. So that means add. So to work out 10 percent, so 10 percent of 240 is 24 pounds. And again, don't forget the units. And then once and now, because I'm increasing, I need to add 24 to the original amount, which gives me 264 pounds. And there we go. Now for decrease questions, again, what I need to do first is find 30 percent. So 30 percent of 45 is basically three times 10 percent of 45. Now, 10% of 45 is going to be 4.5. So, 3 times 4.5 is going to give me, uh, well, 3 times a 0.5 is 1.5. And 3 times 4 is 12. So, it's going to be 13.5. So, then what I then need to do is simply add or take away. So, it's going to be 45 minus 13.5. And again, if I'm going to do this without a calculator, I need to make sure I'm doing 45, and then I've got 13.5, and I'm going to add a zero there, take them away, so I'm going to take, that turns to a 4, that becomes a 10, so I've got 5, 1, 3, so it becomes 31.5. Now, because it's money, I need to make sure I add a zero, so it's £31.50. Now there are some practice worksheets uh, for you to have a go at in the description, have a go at those for general practice. There are some answers as well for you to check your answers. There is also a Excel uh, spreadsheet which has got a range of different questions. The only thing you need to make sure that you do is when you load that up, there should be a little ribbon at the top that says enable content or some security enable. Just click OK. Uh, and it should be absolutely fine and then you carry on from there. But like I said, there are some ranges of different questions ranging from easy percentages to quite complex percentages to increase or decrease questions as well. And obviously it's handy to have a bit of paper um, for you to have a go at those questions just so you can do the working out. But when you are doing this on the exam paper, make sure you do show you're working out. Even if you're doing little calculations in your head, make sure you're writing those amounts, particularly if it's worth more than one mark.